Well, hey there, you're on the internet, and I have some very bad news. Um, I'm recording this on St. Patrick's Day, which means I've already missed about four days of updates, and I figured you guys should probably know why. What you see in front of you is my trusty computer. The only one I got. And it's actually, I think, from late 2008. And as the stickers probably reveal in all those years, it's been on a lot of trips with me. Went to Venice for three months, went to Dublin for three months, went to Berlin for a couple months. It's been in Rome for almost a year combined. Was in Amsterdam for a while. It's been a bunch of other places. Went to Iceland, it went to Vienna, Spain. Uh, yeah, the thing is, it's dying. Um, I've done everything I can and it just, it can't, it can't recover. The thing is, uh, I bought that when I still had a student discount and I don't really have that anymore. And if you're a, uh, kid, if you watch a lot of my videos, you'll probably know that, uh, just after New Year's this past year, I had surgery. I actually had to open up the back of my skull, scoop some stuff out with a little melon baller and I got to go back in about four months. And uh, the United States does not have social health care. Uh, you know, it doesn't have uh, provided health care for its citizens. And if you have really been watching my videos from the beginning, which I don't encourage because those early ones are just awful, but um, in the early days, I used to start my videos with, you're on the internet, I'm unemployed. And that's true. Um, I've been unemployed since about 2013. So, uh... I don't, I don't really have the means to replace this computer in the foreseeable future. Um, in fact, this entire program has been run on the generosity of others. It was something I started to give myself something to do. And you guys have been great. The problem is you guys keep asking for things. And I, and I, and I, I, I really I want to. I want to provide as much as I can because I like that I'm doing something that's helping you guys. The thing is I don't have... The resources. Um, what's really funny is when people are like, you should get this or you should get that or you know, like really expensive things like you should get like your lighting sucks or like your camera is a piece of shit. The thing is my camera is actually pretty friggin awesome. Here I'll show you. It's this. Not that the light will allow it. Uh, it's a Canon. It's a uh, super fancy it's uh yeah it's like ultra hd does all kinds of cool stuff that's i really don't want to freehand this because uh i don't want people to get motion sick but here goes nothing uh yeah i'm using my iphone at the moment but uh yeah it's not it's not the camera because the camera is pretty bomb uh it's the computer the computer's dying and uh but since I couldn't figure out what to do when I got a thousand subscribers, I don't really have enough money to give stuff away. I thought at least I'd give you a tour of my quote unquote facilities and resources. So I thought you might enjoy that. And I'm gonna switch over to the fancy camera now. Although admittedly, I don't know how I'm gonna post this, so. Okay, so as previously established, this is the computer. It's like a 2008 MacBook or something. Uh, but yeah, so that's that. Uh, I can't show you the camera that I'm recording with now because obviously I'm recording with it, but um, it's a Canon uh, Vixia HFG220 FDHD something or other. There's all kinds of crazy fancy stuff. Uh, yeah, it shoots up to, what is it, 920 to 1080p. It's, you know, Super fancy. It's got internal memory, and then I've got uh, I think two of those in there. So it's not it's not memory. That's the problem. It's it's the computer. And uh, for all you people who are like lighting, lighting. The thing is, I felt so self conscious about it because so many people complained about it that my big present for the holidays and my birthday this year was this. I'll show you. My family had heard me talking about it so much that they did something about it. Uh, they got me this, which is actually a tripod clamp tripod and then you put, you're supposed to put the light on there, but actually I found out that I can clip this to the side of the desk I'm using currently and uh, 
Yeah, so I actually use this for my camera and then I put the light on a tripod and the light is this. It's actually designed to work with like a GoPro, but um, yeah, it's an LED light and actually it's in the carrying case. But So what it is, it runs on a battery and the problem is the battery only lasts for an hour and a half and each of my videos now that they're roughly 15 minutes and I do seven of them at a time uh, that's become somewhat of a problem but anyways this is the light and every other one of these is a yellow LED and then the, like one next year will be a white LED and so I can actually adjust how much yellow versus white light I want that's the battery so yeah <laughs> So many people complained about it, but the parents felt really bad for me and they bought me that light. So, yeah. Uh, now, oops, sorry. For the rest, I'll, uh, I'll just try and give you a quick tour. So, yeah. So, this is my box of completed tests. Those are just face filler, space filler because the other box got to be too small. And I have them broken up into little sections. So there's like noodlers and diamine and whatever. And then I keep track of how many of each group I have completed. So that's that. And then I've actually kept every single test I've done since the very beginning. To the point where this box is so full I can't fit anything else in it. Uh, these are the early tests. They go literally all the way back to the first one. Which I think is Schaefer Red where I only did it on, on two papers. Yeah. Uh, all the way up to... Pretty sure the last one I posted, which was Private Reserve Invincible Black. So yeah, this is this holds about I think about 275 tests. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna need a bigger box. I'm gonna need a bigger boat. Anyways, uh -huh. these are all the completed samples that I've done. Um, admittedly, some of them I used all of. So these are just the ones that I still have remains of. It was easier to just take the whole drawer out. Um, yeah, so this is a drawer. I'll give you a tour. This is where I keep the samples. So those are all the completed samples. Those are the ones in pens that are not yet tested. Those are all noodlers. These are KWZ, Roaring Clinger, J.R. Bond, Faber-Castell, Ackerman, Toucan, Private Reserve. Those are all ones I have just one of. Yeah, those are all dye mine. Those are diatrementus. Uh, put that down so nobody gets motion sick. These I just got from the wonderful mysterious benefactor. Every single thing that he sent me exploded, which was both amusing and tragic because it was obvious in his packing just how careful he was. It took me four hours to gather up and, and clean up everything, but um, yeah, he sent me these, which are the Fountain Pen Hospital exclusive noodlers, and uh, two more Ackermans, yep. and uh, these are some KWZs, he sent me some large samples of those, and some more small samples, uh, let me see, oh, this is the giant bag of KWZ samples, and they're empty, oh, yeah, uh, I had this wonderful benefactor for, for a while now uh, from Belgium who sent me Ackerman and he sent me them in these instead of vials. Um, apparently these are sushi packets, or they're soy sauce packets in sushi. So uh, he cleaned those out and sent those to me. Yep, uh, I, think that's, I think that's about it for that. So yeah, that's the drawer. Oh, these are uh, more samples that the Mysterious Penefactor sent me. These are the ones that I've already completed tests for. So this is how I set up to do a test. I'll select an ink and I'll select pens that I want to test the ink in. So for example, so for example, I think I have KWZ Pine Green in these two. And I have KWZ Azure number one in those two, etc. I just built 20 ounces of soda. Anyways, uh, once I have an ink selected and I put it in the pen, I then 
use the pen to do chromatography. And then uh, at the same, when I have the same syringe full of ink as I'm filling the, the pens, I also put a little bit on a piece of paper. And actually, I highly recommend this for people. I use a paint mixing knife because that's a, an extension of a technique I was learned or I was taught when I was learning printmaking called drawdowns, where you put a drop of ink and then you draw very slowly and then quickly. And it shows you all the facets of an ink, in that case, <laughs> printmaking ink, but it also kind of works here. So, yeah, then I do the different tests, so like bleach or water. And then I get the pieces of paper together. So I bundle them. There's moleskin in mead, 20 pound, Tomoe River, Rhodia, <laughs> Fabriano, Clairefontaine. So then I have it all ready to go for when I want to do a test. Spoiler alert for which ones I was testing before the computer died. As for the paper, I have this. This is my, my stack of pre-cut papers. You can see the different areas. So like moleskin, mead, 20 pound, Tomoe River, Rhodia, Fabriano, and then two types of Clairefontaine, just the regular like notebook kind, and then Sayez. Now I hadn't anticipated moving the tripod, but I think this might be easier. These are my boxes of ink. Uh, let me get that out of the way. Uh, this is my noodler's box, mostly, uh, with the exception of this Edelstein. And it's 4001. This is all noodlers, including these bottles. <laughs> this Bay State, Heart of Darkness, Nikita. Yeah, uh, here are the Drawn Ghouls exclusives in these little boxes from the Mysterious Penefactor. He also sent me these. This is Raven Black and Blue Upon the Plates of Abraham, which is from Wonder Pens. And then uh, Texas Black Bat, also from Drawn Ghouls. And Old Manhattan Blackest Black. At least that's what it says on the label. Uh, that's from uh, Fountain Hospital in New York. Then uh, these are all pretty standard. Oh no, except this is uh, these I got at the pen show. These are they were kind of disastrous, but anyways, it was fun. And then these are just sort of normal bottles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me see. Oh yeah, and then in the back. It's sort of like my mixed bag. That's a little bit of everything. It's mostly diatromentous. Oh, it's gonna be a disaster. <coughs> yep, what I say, disaster. So it's a lot of diatromentous in here. And then I've got like one Schaefer, one Jerobon 1670, a couple of Sailor, uh, my one uh, Organic Studios, my one Waterman. And actually, I hate that Waterman, but. Personal preference. And then under that I've got my couple of bottles of private reserve. And this is all kept in a light safe area so it doesn't fade and all that. But um but yeah, here are my swatches. All my inks. These are the ones that I've tested, but uh, I haven't posted or recorded yet. Uh, these are all the ones I have but I've not yet tested. These are all the ones I had samples of and have tested. And these are all the ones I have bottles or cartridges of and have tested. With the exception of all the Chesterfield ink I have because I haven't decided whether I want to test it yet since it is just rebottled Dimeline. <sighs> okay. Ugh. Speaking of Dimeline. Well, mostly. So I've got some Ackerman, these big old bottles here, and then these two little sample bottles. Okay. And under that, I've got the rest of my Chesterfield, the small bottles, and then Diamine, I've got Autumn Oak. And then I love, I love the 30 milliliter bottles. I got a ton of those, I got like 20 of those, uh, 25. And then more Chesterfield. And then I've got the big 80 milliliter bottles underneath. <laughs> yep. 
Oh, I'm gonna pick you up again. Now, I feel like everybody who's a fountain pen person probably has one of these. It's a bottle of uh, converters. It's an old spice bottle. Oh, and I don't know what these are, but I cannot highly recommend them enough. I think they're like some kind of, come on out. I mean, obviously there's some kind of flossing thing made by whoever. And it's just this little bristle on the end. It almost looks like a, I don't know, like a mascara brush or something on this little wiry thing. It's great for when you have to crack open a pen and you have to clean out a feed. So yeah, that's weird, but it's cool. This is, uh, oh, yeah, my two, bo two bottles in Mont Blanc and my Mont Blanc cartridges, because this is my cartridge box. Sounds like an ammo can or something, but yeah, so all of these are cartridges. Oh God, I'm gonna do that all day. This is all Pilot. This is what I bring with me when I travel. It's Standard Internationals. It's just a mixed bag. My cat is really angry. Wants to be let in. Okay. Uh, this is also a mixed bag. Got some Mont Blanc in there. A lot of that's where I keep my Schaefer, my .9 pencil stuff. Although I'm morally opposed to pencils. And then this is an old Twinnings tin. Twinnings. It's got my Parker stuff in it. And then a uh, little J.R. Bond tins. Guy of mine. Uh, these are all private reserve. Like tropical blue. And then back here, these little paper boxes are the long cartridges. Oh, this is Lamy. <laughs> I got and then here, Edelstein. Let's see what I got. I got a lot of garnet. Because <laughs> I really liked garnet. Uh, let me see. Yeah, more garnet. Oh, topaz. Oh, I've still got topaz. That's good. I can retest that because that video gets more dislikes than just about anything else on my channel. Mm. Oh yeah, and this is a, a mixed bag of things that I didn't know what they were and are probably mislabeled or ones that I made myself. So yeah, uh, I'm not gonna teach you that technique because man, is it time consuming. Yeah, uh-huh, uh what else? Oh, yeah, just like random stuff I keep on my desk, I guess. Uh, God, I made a mess, hang on. Okay, and here's all the random stuff I keep scattered around my desk. Uh, actually, I keep this on my bookshelf. These are all Hero 616s. Uh, all the ones with the dots on them are ones that I've altered to make broader or wetter. Yep. Uh, oh, this is my mug of syringes. Uh, that sounds like something out of a cartoon. That should not exist in real life. Um, but yeah, I bring these back from Italy. They're just these little uh, two and a half milliliter syringes. You can get like, I think, ten of them for like two or three dollars. Every time I go, I bring them back. And this is a very beautiful mug that one of my good friends in college had this Amish guy he knows make it. Um, I love it so much, and the shape is just fantastic. But I never use it. I uh, don't want anything to happen to it. Instead, I drink out of Erlenmeyer flasks because, you know, reasons. Uh, yeah. Oh, I also have this. It's a pencil case of syringes. Yeah. Um, for travel purposes, of course. Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah, these are just sort of like little cups of things I keep on my desk. So they're all like saucepans. Um, yeah, so these are 616s with ink in them. This is the paint knife I was talking about earlier. Great for smears. Uh, and it's small enough that it can reach inside a little vial. So that's nice. Uh, one of my favorite quills, it's uh, hand turned, and it's got this lovely nib on it that has a built-in reservoir, so it lasts for a while. Let me see. Oh, uh, my Noodler's Ghost black light pen. Uh, I got a couple of uh, Esther books in there. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. oh, this is my like weird miscellaneous thing. My only Pelican, which has a mixed ink in it. Um, my markers, preppy markers, which I love. 
or they're impossible to wash out. Oh, my 0.9 red lead pencil that I use for like cutting things and uh, like paper and stuff. Uh, my Conrad brush pen, which is always fun to play with. I use it to address envelopes. That's always a bold statement. Uh, Oil-based paint markers for uh, reasons, you know, because like you do. Uh, carbon, uh, carbon ink brush pen. These are great. Um, these I used to write on all of my chromatography papers. That's uh, like a 0.25 little gel pen. And this is a real mixed bag. Uh, it has my parallels in here. <laughs> my pointy thing. Uh, hemostats, you know, like you do. My Menlo. Uh, yeah, this amber italics, which I always thought looked like a dinosaur egg. Isn't that crazy, right? Really? Anyways, but yeah, it, uh, I generally keep garnet in there, so I keep it separate, so I always know where it is. Oh, yeah, uh, this is, it's technically called a bone folder. Uh, it's used for folding paper, making firm creases and things like that. Uh, generally, they're made out of bone and shaped a bit differently. This is a, a plasticky one, but uh, my actual bone folder is with my bookmaking things, so, yep. And then this is a cigar box where I keep my pens. And since I love cheap pens, I have a friggin' ton of them. But the terrifying thing is when, like, if I were to clean all my pens and, like, keep them all together and, like, you know, like, separate them, uh, I would need two of these boxes. Because, I mean, I got stuff in there and I got stuff over there and I got stuff in there and I got stuff way behind me and all that stuff. yeah so I got a lot of pens and then this uh, I just got it was in that other package from the mysterious pedifactor where I got this stuff from Fountain Pen Hospital uh, luckily these were packaged separately I put them in this bag they didn't come in this bag uh, and they were the only things that didn't come out absolutely covered in ink and the mysterious pedifactor sent me a bunch of pens the amusing thing is I already own every single one of these pens, which uh, I feel shows some, uh, so that we have similar tastes between me and the mysterious benefactor, which I find encouraging. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of all I got. That's uh, that's the facilities tour. Um, in the process, I knocked over 540 milliliters of Mountain Dew, so I gotta go clean that up. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye.